June 14th. Caller 10. These are yours. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. He's not much of a morning person and apparently not much of an afternoon person either. The Alec Cox Show on 100.7 WMS. Schools, and they think that part of the reason is uh, that kids uh, aren't taught cursive anymore. This isn't true across the board. I think that there are some uh, schools still that do this. But uh, most people in general say that they don't really employ cursive that often. Most people are typing all the time now. But when they're uh, handwriting something, they're not doing it in cursive. And so they're wondering if that needs to be changed. Um, I thought the headline was funny. Teachers say that some 20-year-olds can't even sign checks anymore. I don't know that a lot of 20-year-olds are handling checks, but okay, I mean, you know, uh, that's one of those uh, skills that I think is considered part of a bygone era, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not useful. People are also having a harder time reading their own handwriting and others' handwriting. I don't write in cursive, but I know that my handwriting which I used to pride myself on, is just god-awful. It's just chicken scratch. Yeah, mine's real bad. Mine's always been bad, though. Has it? Yeah. Mine's cute. Mine's bubbly cheerleader handwriting. Chicky. Still? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, as a younger man, like when I was in, like, elementary school, I was winning penmanship awards. Can you believe they gave awards? I want to for- punch you right now. Just to, like, <laughs> I wasn't even a bully in school, but I feel like somebody should. <laughs> But that's on brand a, for me. Like, like a Nelson Muntz <laughs> reaction where like, yeah. all right, a penmanship award? Yeah, yeah, he needs to be punched a I little bit. I was the Martin Prince of my yeah. elementary school. <laughs> Several U.S. states are trying to prevent handwriting from going extinct. You know, a lot more classrooms. Even, you know, my daughter, my second grader, has a laptop that goes with her to and from school. They have little Chromebooks. And so... About 15 years ago, it was 2010, uh, that federally they said they didn't need to teach cursive anymore as part of a core curriculum because everybody was like, look, the way technology is moving, fewer and fewer people are going to need to write. Is that something we still need to teach kids? What they're saying is that things like handwriting kind of keep, they're good for your brain. It's a fine motor skill. And so... They're worried that, you know, listen, I don't think anybody's going to argue that uh, people aren't getting dumber. And technology has no small part in that. Right. I was going to say that. I was going to say I don't think cursive is the problem. Younger generations have had screens in front of their face from the time they're two years old. Well, I don't think they're putting it all on cursive, but at the very least they're saying cursive. Writing is a good thing to know how to do. There's something called dysgraphia, where kids can read, but they have a hard time writing letters. Yeah, you can, like the actual letters, because I mean, remember when you were in in, in grade school and they taught you how? Remember cursive, like draw a capital Q. Yeah, I still. You can't never do, it. do the capital Q anymore. You draw a circle with a little hash mark in it. You don't do that but big don't, loopy Q anymore. I'm writing cursive, although every once in a while, like one. Letter will be like, you're going to be in cursive or you're going to be well, capitalized for no reason. Yeah. I'm, yeah, my handwriting. I, I so rarely put pen to paper that when I do, it's very uh, all over the it's place. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. I have to say this in a specific way so that people who have children listening don't get upset. Mm-hmm. A few times a year, yeah. letters will come to our house in cursive. So that will take um, probably. The characters who are writing those, it probably takes them four or five times <laughs> to get it right just so that the handwriting isn't recognized. I don't understand, you understand what, what you're saying. I don't. Is Santa Claus writing letters to your house? Santa Claus is writing letters in cursive. Yeah. And it's hard for Santa Claus yeah. or the Easter Bunny to remember how all of those letters work. Gotcha. Sometimes. Well, so they're just so old. 30 or 40 minutes <laughs> to write a letter. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that the mythical creatures are feeling this too. Mm-hmm. There, <laughs> there's a so there's a crunch across the board, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. I like but how you went through all that just to then at the end <laughs> be like, and the mythical, the mythical oh, creatures. Shit. <laughs> 
idiot. So all <laughs> the fake things are. Oh mm-hmm. God, last Mary. Last time I said something, I got in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. What an idiot. <laughs> oh, good job. God, I'm dumb. But also, I, you know, Mary, Mary, we can blame a lot of this on whatever, you know, screens and stuff like that, but it's really just idiocracy coming to fruition. No. Well, but the, yeah. but, but, but this no, is. No, because no. it's also. Uh, little by little. Friggin' well, homeschooled for two years and. They were on Zoom classes. Yeah, by their dumb the parents. Pa- that's what I mean. Through their whole pandemic, like this, I don't think cursive is the one. There's a lot of other things. Well, no, nobody's it, nobody's it. putting it all on cursive's shoulders. They're just saying that this is a big thing that was a thing in school and now hasn't been for a while. Uh, there are six states, states like California and New York, uh, that are try- Colorado, Nevada, that are trying to get this back into the curriculum. Uh, that kids 6 to 12 would learn cursive. Because I think of it as, and I mentioned this to my wife the other day when our daughter was tying her shoes. I was watching my daughter tie her shoes, and she did it in a way that I had never seen before, but it gets the job done. And so I'm like, I wonder if shoe tying is a thing that kids kids need to know anymore. So it's we still have laces. They do, but yeah, even why wouldn't they need to know that? Because fewer and fewer adult shoes have laces on them, for one thing. So you're moving into an area. But again, this goes back to things that might be less and less useful per se, but they're still good to know, like fine motor skills, like reading an analog clock. There are kids who are like, I don't know what that says, because they don't see them that often. Brian and I got in an argument about that. So, like, ma- so th- to me, there's a thing of like, and that what these people are saying is that uh, cursive and writing, it's useful in maintaining your cognitive flexibility, even if it's something you're not doing every day. And you guys got into an argument on clocks. I like the way old at like old analog clocks look. Yeah. Um, they're pretty. I think that they're pretty. And I had one and I wanted to hang it up in the living room. And he's like, you don't need that. Like there's never a time where we're far enough away from our phones or you have a watch that you need to know what time it is on the wall. But it was decoration for you, I right. assume. And then I realized, I'm like, you don't know how to tell time on that, do you? And because it's also. <laughs> yes, in Ro- he does. It's also in Roman numerals. But he's a grown so man. It's- it's not just 12-1-2, it's like, you know, X-I or V-I. <laughs> and he'll struggle with it a little bit. Where it'll take, he can't just look at it and immediately be like, oh, it's 10-15. He'll look at it and it'll take him a few seconds to figure out what time it is. What time is it? It's V past IX. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, and I'll tell him, I'll be like, <laughs> is the first time that I, I asked, like I looked over at the clock and I said, oh, it's this, or I asked him what time it was and he looked and it took him 30 seconds. I was like, do you not know how to read that clock? I was like, is that why you were so against me putting a clock in here? Also, <laughs> why would you get it in Roman numerals? Because I like the way it looks. That's very ostentatious. I like the way that it looks. All right. If we're going to put it as a decorative, functional decoration, yeah. I like the way that it looks, and it is also a clock. But then why beat him up if he's got to take a second to look at it and figure out what? I mean, you think that you think that it could be pictures of cartoon characters and he'd immediately know the time because of the positioning on the clock. Right. Doesn't that's matter my, if it's Roman that's numerals. That's my thought was, yeah. that it doesn't really matter if you can suss out where the hands are. You can right. at least be within five or ten minutes of what time it is. Yeah. It's like yeah, the I Mickey think- Mouse watches we used to have, yeah. man. You'd never laugh harder than when it was 630 because Mickey's hands were in his crotch. Mm-hmm. You'd go, what time is it? And your friend would go, not yet. It's not funny yet. It's only four after five. Ask me in about an hour and 25 minutes. And then it's going to be hilarious. Those big oversized gloved hands, both in Mickey's crotch. I mean, we had a Felix the Cat when I was a kid. A lot of people won't know this. There was a uh, a cartoon character named Felix the Cat. And when I was a little, little kid, we had a clock where the tail would wag, you know, like a pendulum on a clock, old school clock. The mm-hmm. tail would wag and the eyes would go back and forth on Felix the Cat. And it had tiny hands in the middle in the stomach. So it was an analog clock. And that was how we learned how to tell time, was on the Felix the Cat clock. And it took me a minute to realize 
that that was a tail going back and forth. I'm like, well, that's a male cat. That's and not I, what their wieners look like. I, we didn't have a cat. We didn't have pets. There's, so it was, uh, I distinctly remember uh, my mom explaining that to me. That that was a tail. It's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But do kids need to know how to write cursive? Uh, from the perspective of um, uh, kind of keeping your brain mossy, that's a pretty good idea. To Bill's point about idiocracy, I don't think anyone is arguing that that's at least not – that's very clearly the direction we are moving. That's the direction we are moving as a species. Not AI, not machine learning. That's the direction we are moving because they said – IQs across the board, or generally speaking, have dropped for the first time ever. So that's the direction they're going. IQ is not the be-all, end-all of, of measuring cognitive ability, but it's kind of a big picture of the best you've got. And so, uh, like, you know, my daughter's school, they, they still learn cursive. She's writing things in cursive. But I don't know if it's, you know, people make the argument that it's not really that important because they're going to be typing all the time anyway. Al, did you fall asleep listening to the TikTok of Felix the Cat? No, I didn't. It, w it wasn't in my bedroom. I hate that noise. The TikTok of a clock? I can't stand it. Yeah, that's a, that's a maddening house. sound. I was staying at my brother's house not that long ago, and the clock in their living room... I was, they weren't there. I was staying there by myself and I was sleeping in the, on the couch in the living room and the clock was so loud. Either it was, so, it was like the house was silent and the clock was so loud. I took it off the wall and put it in their bedroom so that I could fall asleep. And then I put it back the next morning because it was like for the house to be completely silent. And then you just hear that. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to fall asleep to this. Really? Mm. All right. No. But then, like, living in the city, honking and cars driving by and things like that doesn't bother me. But complete silence with one little noise, that'll drive me nuts. Oh, you either, you either need a cacophony or you need nothing. Yeah, I guess. I mean, when I first moved from Chicago to Kalamazoo, Michigan, when I got my first full-time radio gig, I had to play a cassette tape of traffic for a month to sleep. Well, Steve Until Wood rules, so you should. <laughs> <laughs> I had low spark of high heel boys on a loop, and I would just, thank God it was long, because, boy, two or three times playing that through, and I'd be snoring like a baby. Like, my wife has misophonia, like the two live crew song. Yeah. Um, misophonia. Right. So any small noises will drive her insane. So there can't be a little ticking clock, and there can't be... Uh, you know, like uh, uh, an air vent that might be vibrating a little bit or things like that. So, yeah. you know, when I'm when I'm locking down uh, the compound at night, got to make sure all that stuff is taken care of. What's yeah, I mean, interesting like for me is, like, I can fall asleep to silence during the day. Like, if I just want to go and lay down for 15 minutes and take, like, a power nap, I can just turn everything off, sit in silence, Boom, I'm out in no time. If I do that at night, my there's no no, there's no sleep. I'll just sit there and be like, let's think about everything we've ever thought before. <laughs> and then just me and my thoughts. Yeah. But if you turn on a little white noise, like traffic, uh mm -hmm. <laughs> out, out cold. Hmm. See, I like when I uh moved in with Brian and now when I go home too, he is one of those like pitch black blackout curtains silent bedroom like you're in a cave we call it the cave like, i mean that's good for your sleep dude i was sleeping like 14 15 hours because i'm like i i lived before that my apartment was on a main road i was on um worcester road in rocky river which is like one of the main drags through rocky river and so even there it was you know cars going by or not as much as it is in new york city but 
it was noisy. That my there was a lamp, um, you know, a uh, street lamp right outside my bedroom. Yeah. So when I moved in with him, and he's got these blackout curtains and noise deafening this, and then the, all the doors are shut and all the lights are off. I'm like, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. I was getting like the best sleep I've ever got. It's like being in the hold of a ship. Dude, you don't you know, know what's it's, going on. Yeah. I like a little light coming from the outside. I don't mind. Wake that. up at noon. I'm like, I I'm delirious. <laughs> I have no idea where I am. But yeah. it feels good though, because some hotel rooms can be like that too. You draw those big, heavy curtains closed. Big velvet curtains. As long as they're not vacuuming the hallway at 6 a.m. Alan, I handle a lot of checks for work, and whenever I see somebody print their name on the check instead of signing it, they instantly lose all credibility with me. What credibility do you need from a stranger's check? I mean, if it's filled out properly, credibility. Hmm. I didn't realize that was part of the financial system there. And also, people like, were handling yeah, the there's checks. people that just are going to print because they didn't learn cursive. It's just not wasn't taught to them so what credibility is cursive what if they have like a real scribbly signature because i have a real scribbly signature and last night when we were at the game grandma's signed her name on something on a tablet and she's doing it so precisely on the tablet i'm like don't you don't gotta do it nice on the tablet I yeah just, drawn anything but a squiggle line yeah just just wiggle your finger around and she's like what the, won't they not approve it i'm like It'll go just fine. <laughs> It'll be, It'll be fine. the system has yeah. to keep on perpetuating itself. They're not yeah. gonna. Alan, you just fall asleep to brown noise. No, I don't fall asleep to. <laughs> no, I switch to green noise. I use green noise sometimes to sleep, and I don't really need that. My wife likes Kermit some kind frog. of. Kermit <laughs> Right. <laughs> Perfect. Alan, you need to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then Fozzie comes in, and it's a lot of waka waka, and uh, yeah. Hmm. The Marines have trained my body to be able to sleep in any position at any time, this person says. I've taken power naps on rifle range. Oh, good for you. Well, yeah, that Marine sleeping thing where you lie there on your back with your arms at your sides, and mm-hmm. you kind of let your body um, relax from your head on down. That's supposed to be like a hack to go to sleep very quickly. But I don't have any trouble going to sleep. My problem is staying asleep. I will go to sleep in any situation. I will sit on a couch and fall asleep. Yeah. I don't have trouble falling asleep. I'm a pretty sleepy person, man. I mean, it's an ongoing joke in my family that the only members of my family who need more sleep than I do are, like, under three years old. (laughs) I mean, I'll take a two-hour nap in the middle of the day. Oh, I can't do that. It won't affect me at all. It won't make me tired. Like, it helps. It makes me more energetic, but it won't affect my sleep that night. Oof. I wonder why that is. Maybe you're anemic. I don't know what I am. I'm like, there's something wrong with me. And then I, like, Googled it, and there's, like, there are sleep disorders, but they're, like... Even requiring 12 hours of sleep a night is normal for some people. That it changes person to person. Some people's bodies need more sleep than other people's do. Hmm. I think what people that have anxiety like you are you're you're so you're in that fight or flight mode so often that your body's expending more energy throughout the day and that's probably why you need so much sleep. Well, it's a mixture of anxiety my anxiety is not even really that bad. I think it's more my ADHD has got yeah. me going, 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 going. Like, my brain never stops. And I was trying to explain this to Brian, where I was saying, like, the inside of my head is the loudest place. I was like, it's like if you were to turn on a country music album and then the sounds of someone tap dancing and then um, slot machines and then have just a random goat screaming and then through all of that... Through all of that, have an interior monologue that is like, okay, we need to do the dishes, we need to do this. You need Why to am I that cranky? Down. To, I'm yeah, so cranky. To, okay, oh, now you need to oh, and, uh, make your bed oh, my and don't God, forget your work so badge. Bad. You forgot your work badge yesterday. Yeah. If you forget your work badge again, oh, they're not going to give it back to you. You can't do that every day. You're going to lose your job if you keep doing that, but don't lose your job because you can't depend on stand-up. Like, that's what my head sounds like 24 hours a day. Yes, that's if that annoyed you. So when I lay down at night, my my brain is like, "We're done. Go to bed. I'm not listening to another thing you have to say." Well, they say to make a list. Let's come back to handwriting. 
write down the act of writing down a list of things kind of lets your mind clear it possibly. It sounds like what you have is probably way beyond making a physical list of things, but still well, make, it's making like making a list helps. I try to do that every day. I, I mean, it probably only happens three days a week where it's like, okay, here's the things I have to accomplish today, but that doesn't stop my head continuously <laughs> narrating what's going on around me. Hmm. Well, there is that. Whatever. I've got to take a break. I'll have those Dave Matthews Band tickets for you. They're getting into the Rock Hall this fall, but you can see them at Blossom a couple of months prior. Dave Matthews Band on the road and doing Blossom June 25th. So if you want to see them, we'll hook that up after the break. Another $1,000 on the way, too. That next keyword is coming. A grand from the buzzard bookie on the way at 3.30. It's the Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox Show. On iHeartRadio. From the Universal Windows Direct Weather Center. WMMS Weather. Showers before midnight, overnight low 44. Tomorrow it will be cloudy with a slight chance of morning rain. High tomorrow 47. Thursday, widespread morning frost, then turning sunny, Thursday's high, 56. This report is sponsored by It's Just Lunch. And the forecast for your dating life is warm and sunny because you're about to join It's Just Lunch and meet other busy professionals like you. Call them at 216-328-9026 or visit itsjustlunchcleveland.com today. It's Just Lunch. Connection awaits with guaranteed dates. Hey there, it's Alan for Window Nation. You know what? You can probably click around and you will hear very similar window offers from a lot of window companies.